What's up, idols? It's Cece Lesson 3. Welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're watching this video, then you'll notice this story sounds very familiar. But here's the thing. The other day, I got an idea from someone who said I should upload everything all together in one compilation and label it as fake so people know that it's fake. And I've also been getting a lot of comments that say that re-watching the whole story from the start knowing it's fake just hits differently on a totally different level of entertainment. Don't worry, this is the last we're going to talk about this story. The last you'll ever hear of all of this. But I'm also still getting new comments on like part one and part two saying that they love the story, that Lay's so lucky, that they can't believe a cool guy like this exists, or they're saying, oh my god, I can't wait for part two. Even though the titles have been relabeled as fake, the descriptions have been relabeled as fake, and it's also included in a fanfic fake playlist, I just want people to understand this video, none of these videos were real. Of course, I did not know that at the time. I am curious if you guys could point out some obvious red flags because watching this over knowing it's fake it really truly does hit differently. So let me know in the comments what was clearly fake, if anything is more entertaining, less entertaining, if anything is like a red flag that stands out more to you now. And uh, with that, enjoy this compilation. I'm not gonna lie, when I first read this story, I was a little bit worried about this girl and her friends. I'm, oof, it's a lot. There's a lot that's about to happen. But it does sound like she took some precautions, and as long as she's safe and having fun, live and let live. But she did put this at the start of her email. Before you read, hiya, I'm Lay. I hope I'm saying that right, L-A-I, Lay. Honestly, it was for the plot. Screw it all. Like, I'm dead serious. I went into this like, F it, they're always screwing us over, it's time for revenge type of mindset. I thought I was a shit and I didn't care about zero risk. I had a goal in mind. So yeah, this story is basically just the wildest night I have ever heard clubbing in Korea. And I spent years in these clubs. So before Lei went to Korea, she spent a lot of time doing her research on YouTube, like a lot of us do, I did it too. How to survive in Korea as a foreigner, being black in Korea, and even about Korean men's packages. And I ain't talking about FedEx. Oh, oh my god. All the stories about being ghosted, stalked, knocked up, etc. So she prepared herself to head into uncharted territory and boarded her flight to Korea. So Lei's in Korea for five months, she's a fresh college graduate, and she's only 21. 21? By the way, another thing she wanted to make very clear, in the story there are four guys that she wants to refer to as certain BTS members. It is not the actual BTS members. She said there are certain things about each of these guys that reminded her of the BTS members. And she sends pictures and like a description why, so that's gonna come later in the story, but don't. She's not trying to drag BTS into this for cloud or anything, it has nothing to do with them. Just a certain vibe she got from these clubbers. She said, no, they weren't BTS members, only in my wettest of dreams lol they reminded me of certain members based on looks vibes and style that's why i'm using their names disclaimers are very necessary in youtubing so a week before she emailed me her and three of her friends decided to finally go out and have this authentic full experience of clubbing in korea she said they were going from club to club like they were homie hopping <laughs> and unfortunately some of the clubs did not let them in because of their race what may the odds be ever in your favor that is a very familiar, sad, and annoying narrative we hear all the time. But they did manage to get into about eight different nightclubs. She said they got a lot of attention flirting, dancing, using their feminine wows. But there was this one club in particular where things really started to pop off. First off, you know it's a good sign when you're having fun while you're queuing in line to get into the club. The bouncer at this club was hella flirtatious. She included a little bit of the dialogue and it goes as follows. Hey hunk, you wanna let us in? Wanna show me some ID? First of all, Lei was completely surprised that he spoke English. <laughs> of course we will. Thank you, doll face. And as she handed over her ID to the bouncer, she caressed his hand in like a very flirtatious, thirsty way. So she has three friends. There's Bestie A, Bestie B, Bestie C. She didn't want to include their names. Understandable. So of course he's looking at everyone's ID, matching them to the face, making sure they're all of age, but he's making a very intense eye contact with Bestie A. So when it all checked out, the bouncer stepped aside, let the ladies in, but not before leaning in and whispering something into Bessie A's ear. Now, Lay doesn't know what was said, but Bessie A replied, right back at you, beefcake. <laughs> Lay's just happy they were allowed in because the club light was popping and they already had some bad luck being rejected at other ones before, simply for their race. So as they stepped into the club, they were caught off guard and surprised because most of the music was American, a lot of familiar music, including Stir Fry by the Migos. <laughs> She said as soon as they heard that, they were they were twerking instantly. They were throwing ass and there were a few Korean men brave enough to attempt to catch it and some of them were catching it. She said, girl, I was tossing my little ass left and right like rent was due. <laughs> Bestie 
FCC had the outward appearance of a very shy person, but when the song came on, she was twerking on not one, but two different Korean fellas. So she said now it's about 10-ish, which I'm like, wait, it's only 10 o'clock, y'all did all of this, and it's only 10 o'clock at night? But she said they wanted to take a break and sit down at a booth, get off their feet because they're wearing heels. They wanted to chill, sit, and look cute, and kind of talk and compare notes with the cute guys they saw, the cute guys they danced with. They were having a conversation about the straight kids, which of the members they would fuck? marry and kiss they didn't want to kill any of them by the way i'm curious about that if you like the straight kids if you're a stay let me know in the comments which of the members you would fuck which of the members you would kiss and which of the marries you would and which of the members you would marry <laughs> So two dudes approached them to talk to Bestie A and Bestie B. And on the outside, Lei and Bestie C were kind of just like, oh, they wanted to step back and see how their friends could handle this flirtatious situation one-on-one. -on -one. And she said Bestie A is currently in her hoe era. So she was like being all flirty, batting her eyes all slow, and she was drinking her drink really slow through her straw. She wants to call one of the guys Junshik because it means talented and strong. She said he had a good body and he was really good at English. So that's why she wants him to have that name. Guy two is Jinwoo because he's precious and admirable. She said because he seemed low he wise and he was also very adorable so when they approached this was a bit of their dialogue <laughs> hey are you single for now great baby and she was saying this because she still had the bouncer from the door in her mind like she wanted to make him hers hi beautiful i'm jinwoo and you are i'm bestie b and thank you you're not too bad yourself this fool winks at her so with this lay and bestie c sees that things are getting a little cozy so they move over in the booth to let the guy sit down too she also wanted to make sure that it was well known that they had cup tops which i didn't know what a cup top was but apparently on amazon they sell cup tops and it's a way to make sure you cover your drink and you don't get spiked in the club that is a thing that every girl should know about. I didn't know that was a thing, so thank you for letting me know, Lei. So while the boys were flirting with Bestie A and B, you know, there's a typical banter. What brings you to South Korea? How long have you been here? But she also noticed they were asking, like, oh, do you want to try a DVD bong? Can we exchange cacaos? But, like, Bestie A wasn't too into it because she still was thinking about that bouncer from the door. <laughs> so Junshik redirects his focus to Bestie C because she said that he was cute. So Bestie B and C gave them their info and they all went to the dance floor, leaving Bestie A and Lei sitting in the booth by themselves now. Though Bestie the A was there she wasn't like really there because she kept looking back at the door and Lay's like what are you looking at she's like nothing like what do you mean what are you talking about she was checking for the bouncer she really wanted the bouncer so then Bessie A is looking around saying how bored she's getting and Lay's like yeah yeah you know the music isn't the best right now and then suddenly Bessie A excuses herself and leaves so when Lay looked back over at her she saw her with the biggest smile because the bouncer had just finished his shift he initiated for her to come over with his finger. I know they do this in Korea, but when she said with his finger, I'm assuming he was like this. Her words, this was all in the email. I came on the spot for daddy, but it wasn't the first time I did that night. <laughs> So that is Bestie A's exit from the story. Don't worry, she's safe, she's fine, but uh, she's not in the story anymore. So now Lei is all alone in the booth. Bestie B and Bestie C are on the dance floor. Bestie A is out with a bodyguard somewhere. So then she said that while she's sitting in the booth by herself, getting her feet a break, she took out her phone, went on YouTube, and typed in CC Lesson 3 to check up for some of my later updates, which I'm like, girl, what? This is like story time -ception. She emailed me a story time but in that story time, she was watching one of my story times. It's called Inception. You guys are amazing. She said she's about eight minutes into the video when four men approached her, but she thought they were kind of just looking around for somewhere to sit, so she didn't really think much of it. And then one of them cleared their throat, like, <clears throat> trying to get her attention. So then she looked up and saw how gorgeous they were. She said they probably got approached by women in the clubs all the time. They look like big earners. They were very well dressed. And this is when she says she looked up and bam, she saw Yoongi, Namjoon, Jungkook, and Hobi. Not really them, just guys who gave her that vibe. I just gotta make that clear. So she included this picture and said, this is the Yoongi guy because he had sharp cat eyes, pale as fuck, and he had long black hair, like in this picture. The Jungkook guy, now his hair was cut like Jungkook's 7th performance, kind of fit, and had big ass doe eyes, he looked like an angel. Keep in mind, these guys don't look exactly like them, it's just small details in the aura. The Namjoon guy was tall and beefy, wearing sexy glasses, and his hair was dyed like a dirty brown. And he spoke the best English of all four friends. All of them could speak English, but she said his was the best. And Hobie was the dancer. Later this will be explained because she got grinded on. He sounded unique and his hair was curly. So yeah, that's just her brief explanation for why she addressed them this way throughout the story. And she said first she thought she was like getting kicked out of the club or something because she's sitting alone in a booth on her phone like on YouTube and she's like, wait, am I not allowed to be on my phone in the club? She thought she was in trouble. So then the Namjoon looking guy says, hey, can we sit here? And she said, nods like a submissive bitch. <laughs> So then the 
Yoongi guy laughed and sat next to her on the left side and Jungkook sat next to her on the right side. So then Lei asked the Namjoon guy, are you the only one who speaks English? Hobi said, no, I speak English too, but only when I'm spoken to, cutie. What did he say? So then she said, oh, that's not my name. And he said, oh, but it could be. Right, little man? To Jungkook. And then she was like, why is she calling him a little man? So all five of them now are sitting in this booth with flirty, friendly banter, introducing themselves, vibing, drinking, enjoying the music. But she said this whole time, Yoongi has not spoken. And that's another reason why she called him Yoongi. <laughs> So while she's talking to the Namjoon guy about like his music, his style, what he likes and stuff, she felt eyes staring holes at her through the cheek. It was Yoongi. He was just staring at her. Even though he wasn't saying nothing to her, he was staring at her. So after a while it's sitting there, they all kind of agreed that the music was getting pretty lame and Lei said, you know what, BRB, she goes up to the DJ to request a song. And the song that she requests is Calm Down by Rima. Calm down, yo this your body, he puts in my heart for lockdown, for lockdown. She said that she knew it was the type of song she could vibe to and be sensual and just sway her hips left and right and she wanted to dance to that. Which, congratulations girl, because I have never seen someone successfully get a song played by the DJ after they requested it. So, wow, you're amazing. So now that she got her song playing, she didn't go back to the boys. She wanted to stay on the dance floor and just dance. Like, this is her song, this is her moment. Suddenly, she feels two hands on her hips and like he's perfectly in sync with her and matching her movement. She said from body rolling slow, low, high, to the left, right, and all around. So then she looked back and it was Hobie. <laughs> She was very impressed by his dance and that's another reason why she called him Hobie. There's so much in her email that's quotable. So I'm sorry if I'm referring too much to the email, but I just wanted to say this in her words because it's amazing. She said, his hand stayed respectfully on my hips or in the air if I bent forward rolling that arse. <laughs> at some point he got really close to my ear and rotated our bodies to the booth us five were sitting at. To my shock, each guy sat staring intently at me and Hobie's body mashed into the beat, occasionally licking their lips and manspreading. Girl, you can call me a tsunami at this point. Yungi though, wasn't looking at my body, but my eyes. Looking at the three, I got a confidence boost moving with Hobie. So then Hobie said, man, they look like they haven't eaten in forever. And she said, he said that in such a sexy voice. To which she replied, well, they do call me a snack. Yeah, she said at this point she had to admit that like the alcohol took over. This was not like her so out of character. She was just in the moment. When Calm Down ended, her and Hobie walked hand in hand back to the booth. And at this point, it's becoming kind of clear that each of these guys are like competing to impress her and fight for her attention. So Hobie made Jungkook scoot over so that she could sit next to him and now she was sat next to Yoongi. All of a sudden, Namjoon complimented her on her dancing. She's like, well, thank you. And Jungkook said he liked to watch her dance. And Yoongi scooted closer to her and she said she could feel like his arm snaking around her waist to pull her closer to him. He was leaning back, but then he got close enough in her ear to say, you like teasing, don't you? And she said, oh, you could have joined me dancing just like Hobie did. Then Jungkook said, Nuna, can you teach me that? And she's like, Nuna, wait, what? Because they're all older than her, and she has no idea why he assumed that he was younger than her. So then she's like, damn, do I look old or something? Then suddenly, Dang by BTS played, and we lost three members. <laughs> Hobie, Jungkook, and Namjoon left and fled for the dance floor. Yoongi stayed in the booth with her, and both of them were kind of just vibing to the song in the booth. So then he's like, oh, do you like BTS? And she's like, oh, of course, the rap line can get it. And he's like, okay, what about the vocal line? She said, well, I like them all, I'm OT7. So they continued like this, just them two talking, when suddenly, Guilty by Taemin played. Y'all know I love that song. And he did something pretty unexpected. Yoongi leaned over and used his index finger and his thumb to turn her head to face him, and they were their lips were centimeters apart. Then he said, This is my favorite song, love, and then he kissed her. It was a powerful territorial kiss, a kiss you shouldn't do in public, especially in Korea. It's like it was just him and I. After about 30 freaking wet ass freaky seconds of kissing, he gently pulled back and said, you're already mines. Wow. She said, for the plot, for the plot. Like, this is her mantra, do it for the plot. <laughs> and she said she was already simping for him at this point. She said, this is what I look for, a dash of loyalty, to be desired and lusted for like I am lusting and loyal to them. I should mention the boys are back after that kiss. They had to have seen the last eight seconds. I was trying to play it cool, but um, I got attached so hard. Y'all, I'm not a hoe, I'm just going with the wind. I heard somebody say damn, and I got put into a lap. And when I looked, it was Hobie. He said, so you've forgotten about me already, cutie? Where's my love, hmm? So uh, 
She kissed him too. She said she ended up kissing all four of them within like a 20 minute time span. Though I should mention that my girls texted me, Bestie B and D texted in the group chat, Bestie C said about to get laid, and Bestie B said, back getting broke now. So Lay asked Bestie A to write this story time, like her encounter with the bodyguard, like, hey, so what happened with that bodyguard? Tell us. And she said she wasn't good at it. So Lay said, I'll write about what happened to me that night. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm gathering my things and following the four boys out of the club into this nice ass car I rode on Jungkook's lap. Are you guys interested in hearing more of this story time? It's quite long and I'm still in Korea with these guys and my girls. Let me know, CC. Video. That's we are back with a highly anticipated part two to the what happens when you leave the club with a sexy Opa story time. Now, if you guys wanna jump straight into the start of the story, it will be time stamped and chaptered below on the little bar thingy. But first, Lei and her besties have a few words that they wanted to share with you guys. Cause there's a lot of comments saying like, oh, this is fake, it's too good to be true, they're lying, what the what pad? Like they didn't think it was actually real. And um, they wanted to say that just because this is a good story that sounds too good to be true doesn't mean they've dealt with a lot of bullshit bad stuff negativity racism xenophobia etc in korea but that doesn't mean that the country as a whole is bad but they've had many bad experiences for example bestie a says firstly we are in our y slash n era i don't know what that means i'm sorry somebody tell me below and for the people who don't want to hear my sister's story is nuts so i'll give you some too good to be true experiences we've had we went to a cafe and got some heat Boy at the cafe talked to us in informal low respect and had a nasty ass attitude but proceeded to treat the natives so well. I was so blown away, but was that too good to be true? How about when we were talking at Han River and a guy spat in our general direction which made us stop and jump back to avoid the ball of spit? We thought, hey, maybe it's a cultural thing since we heard so much about this. But a sweet oldish Korean lady smacked him on the head with a newspaper and said he's not being cultural, he's being disrespectful. We were shaken, but we didn't let it ruin our day. Lay could have mentioned that too. How about when I had a one night stand with a guy and he told me after never thought an n-word would feel so nice. Hey yo, what the fuck? That had me livid. Really, little dick? Or maybe when we went to sit in the park and we sat there, it was kind of crowded and they scooted away from us so quickly. Not obviously, but we noticed the distance grew. But we just ate our lunch and chatted. A mother grabbed her son away from me when his baseball rolled by me and said, dangerous in Korean, wilme. And I tried to reassure her that I'm not. None of us are, but she wasn't having it. Point is, Lei had a lot of things to do and say that could bash Korea. Yes, she chose to share this beautiful story about how nice it can be as you're about to see. Spoilers, we are not mad, simply wanting to show that we are very much experiencing real shit too. We are just being more relaxed since we had a new element. To wrap up my chat, I no longer want to have Lei share my intimate details of me and the bodyguard's connection. I was thinking about letting her share it for me, but I decided I didn't want to see fake anywhere else and go off. So she has my permission to say small things, but the rest will stay hidden. I'm sorry anybody who wanted to hear it because I saw lots about me. To give you closure, he's five years older than me, mature, seductive, and handsome. He respects me and treats me well so far. He knows about this channel and he doesn't want to be out there. But yes, we fucked. Bestie C said, Only one thing traumatized me and it's about the cup tops. Lay didn't mention it for no reason. I told her about it when me and Bestie B went to a club for 10 minutes to try a drink we never heard of. But sadly, the guy who tried to force himself on Bestie B tried putting white powder in her cup. Looked like medicine called goodies for headaches, but God knows it wasn't that. Now I won't speak on the bad stuff too much since, well, Bestie A went off and said what she said. It is sad, but the beauty of Korea for me is way more than that. I stick alone unless I'm with my girls. Yeah, maybe Korea has some lows, but so does the rest of the countries. I had and I'm still having a wonderful time here. I'm learning so much and it may not have people from the dramas as, as many personalities everywhere, but they certainly caught the charm. Please do visit here though. The clubs are very nice and the four guys Lay met are awesome. Childlike, but yet cool grown men. So now they said what they had to say. They just want you guys to enjoy the story. It's not fake. They want to be very sure about that. And now we're gonna get back into Lay's story. What happened? next so if you guys remember the last story time lay left the club with four guys and she was in the car with them and again fresh reminder these guys are named after bts members no they are not the bts members she's not trying to make this a clout thing she's not trying to drag them into it she said their vibe their aura their style certain details about them reminded her of these bts members so there's jungkook Hobi, Yoongi, and Namjoon. So yeah, she said, go ahead and get your popcorn ready. They all left the club together, and while she's in the car with these four boys, she's sitting on Jungkook's lap. Now while she was in the car, she started to have like this moment of sobering up a bit and realizing, wait, this ain't the best situation to be in. Though they were in a more crowded area where like the parties were and the clubs were and lots of pedestrians and witnesses, it did make her feel better, but she still had the moment of being like, Oh shit. Bad touch! Stranger danger! She's overthinking everything. Like, I just met them two hours ago in the club and now I'm in a car with the four of them. She said, and I quote, Now I'm in a car alone with four hot giants. What if I don't see the sun again? 
What if they're in a cult? So you have to be trusted. She didn't realize this, but her anxiety was starting to act up again and her legs started to shake from nervousness while she was in Jungkook's lap. So yeah, Jungkook noticed this and he asked her if she was okay. And she said, yeah, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm fine, I'm just cold. And he asked her if sitting in the middle seat, not on his lap, would make her feel better and more comfortable. And she thanked him for that, so she did. And at this moment, all four of the guys kind of looked at each other and looked at her and they realized that she was really uncomfortable. So Namjoon was the one that was driving and he decided to make some lighthearted like English misunderstanding jokes. He did, they all started joking about English in the car. And it lightened the mood. He made jokes about BTS and he also, they decided to play the fuck, marry, kiss with the Stray Kids members in the car. <laughs> Lay says she would marry Bang Chan. She decided to kiss Chang Bin and she wanted to fuck Han. So yeah, now they're finally having a conversation and she's a bit more relaxed and Hobie said, you know, I think you're really cool and so are your friends. And she's like, my friends? Like when the hell did you meet my friends? So he explained that while she was on the couch sitting with Yoongi and making out and talking with him, they were on the dance floor and they met her two other friends. If you guys remember, Bessie A had left the club with the bouncer. There's Bessie B and Bessie C on the dance floor. So Bessie C was already pretty interested in the guy that she was talking to from the last story time. Bessie B though was fair game. She was showing signs that she was interested in talking with these boys a little more. So after a while, she's like, oh, wow, cool, they met my friends. And she decided to share some stories about her friends. And then as they're talking, Jungkook says that he still wants to go to the club. And <laughs> Lay's like, it's 1 a.m., like, I'm, I'm kind of tired. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry, though. So for the most part, in this car ride, Yoongi is really quiet. Like, he's laughing along with the jokes, but he's not really saying much or contributing to the conversation. He didn't really say anything at all. So yeah, Lay said that she was hungry, and Namjoon said that he could drop her off home and maybe order her some food at her house. She thanked him, but politely declined and said, y'all can just take me to a 7-Eleven and I'll be cool. So as they're heading to the 7-Eleven, it became pretty clear that the other three, Jungkook, Hobie, and Namjoon, still wanted to go do some more clubbing and dancing. Lay was hungry, she didn't want to. Nobody knows what Yoongi's thinking right now because he's not really saying much. So they get there, she thanks them for taking her to 7-Eleven, she gets out of the car, and Yoongi hops out of the car too. He was quiet this whole time, she had no idea that he wanted to go to 7-Eleven as well, so he opens the door and gets out, she's like, what are you doing? Like, you're coming in too? And she actually said, may I help you, your highness? And she did like a playful curtsy. And then Yoongi said, are you sick or something? No woman should be out alone at night, let alone in another country. You're basically raw meat for a dog pound. Lots of pounding metaphors going on. What do you mean by that? So Lay says she appreciated his concern, but she has three crazy friends who know her location. She has gadgets, she has pepper spray or mace. So Yoongi told her to just walk inside and he like shook his head and laughed it off. So now that she's in the store and she's seeing all these yummy snacks that she's seen on YouTube, other mukbangs, mukbangs, other mukbangs that she wanted to, ooh, I wanna try that, ooh, I saw that, I wanna try that too. She started to grab a lot of snacks and Yoongi is in the store with her. Not following too closely, but not following too far behind. Like he can keep an eye on her, but he's not creepily close. So then he said something that her American brain took as an insult, like it rubbed her the wrong way, because to her this equated to somebody calling her like a fat ass or saying you're greedy. But he said, you eat well. And you know, that's a pretty common Korean phrase for people who eat normally. And uh, she said she learned that, but this was one of the first times someone said it to her, so she was like, the fuck? And she said she like turned her neck and it jerked to him. She was like, no, I just have the appetite of an adult and not a little child. And to prove her point, she just started grabbing even more snacks. So then she gets a text from Bestie A. It was saying that her and the bodyguard were heading back to their place. They all share one place together. And she just said to Lay, we're just hanging out. And she was thinking, well, they already banged. So yeah, they're probably just hanging out, maybe eating some food and watching TV. Cause if you guys remember in the last story, she texted the group chat saying, getting my back broke now. <laughs> so she figured that was done. Now they're just gonna hang out, eat, maybe talk a bit. So it's fine. But yeah, Lay says later in the story, she was in for a very rude awakening. Stay tuned. So yeah, she just texted her back and said, okay, cool. So now that Lay has all her snacks, she says she had close to 25 items and Yugi only had about five, but they had a lot of similar things. So they had to prepare their ramen, prepare their little sausages. They had their tteokbokki, they had their juices and drinks, a pink drink. And in that moment, she thought that the microwave was so cool. And she said she felt extra American in that moment. She was giggling. She was so excited. That she's about to eat like her food is right there she's just like mm -hmm, I'm about to eat I can't wait to eat so Yugi sat down across from her and then they started a conversation that she said changed how she viewed the world this is what Yugi said you know our intentions weren't the best at first then he paused took a breath and he finished me and the guys we are young so when we saw four girls who were unique to what we saw on a daily we instantly just thought a good time which is wrong in a way and I acknowledge that a lot in these past few hours getting to know you it was simply sex and go for us not like the fuck boys because it was the fuck girls who weren't serious anyways and she said she had to admit to him that it was kind of the same thing for her because these days recently with you know people loving anime and Chinese dramas and K-dramas and K-pop that Asian men are more 
desired and sought after. So she said it was kind of the same for her and her friends when they got to Korea. He said he wanted to let her know because these days his people do that a lot to foreigners. They, they get what they want and then they ghost. He's a phantom. And he said this is what Yoongi and his friends had in mind until they got to know Lei and her friends. And he apologized, he said it was a lot of lust and not a lot of sincerity. Yoongi said that I see you and I realized I wasn't trying to hook up with just another whore, his words. And honestly, Lei appreciated his honesty. It's kind of like that fuckboy confession video that we just did a few weeks ago. She never expected any guy, specifically in this situation, she's in Korea, a Korean guy to be so honest and open about a topic like this. She's like, I'm surprised that you're you're sharing this with me. He's like, yeah, I usually don't. This is weird for me too. So yeah, they had this this moment, like a really nice deep conversation in the 7-Eleven. And then Lei for a minute thought like, hmm, I wonder what his friends are doing right now. So then Yugi said, Psh, they're probably looking for your friends. And he made himself laugh so hard at his own joke. So they sat there talking about this more and they also decided to share some horrible hookup stories with each other. And then she said she, at this moment, she realized that Korean guys have it pretty bad too when it comes to hooking up with foreign girls. For example, Yugi shared the story about when he was getting a BJ and the girl bit down on him because he wasn't moaning loud enough. <laughs> So at some point in this conversation where they're sharing story times about hooking up with foreigners and stuff, Lei got up from, they remember they're sitting across from each other in 7-Eleven, so she got up to sit right next to him and she took out her phone and she decided to show him one of my videos about my clubbing experiences in Korea as a foreigner. And she used their cup of noodles to like prop up her phone so they could watch the video together. Shockingly, Yoongi said that he recognized the clubs that I went to and he also recognized a guy in the background of one of my videos. So then he pulled out his phone to take a picture of her phone and then sent it to the guy that he recognized in my video. She said it was somebody named Minhu or Minhyu. So then Yoongi called him and they had a conversation. Now her Korean's not the best. She says she's not 100% solid, but this is what she thinks she heard. Yoongi said, wake up famous. And the men guy said, what? Yoongi said, see ass YouTube video picture. Mindu said, why? And then Yoongi said, dickhead, I don't know. And then the men guy said, ah, famous, wah. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, after some more chatting, they decided to pick up what was left of their snacks and head out and go for a walk. At this point, she's only about 30 minutes from her apartment, from the place she stayed at with her friends, and she figured they might as well go there. Even though her feet hurt, she wanted to go home. So they're walking and talking and flirting and you know, the little playful shoving and everything, like such a good flirtatious atmosphere. And she says she thought this was so cute because he was so not like this in front of his friends. He was really quiet and pretty stoic. So now that it's almost 3 a.m., they make their way to her place and uh, she's fumbling with the key, like trying to get in her apartment. And she felt his chin resting on her shoulder and he was like leaning against her and she got so nervous, like, oh my God, all of a sudden. So she's fumbling with the key rattling the keys and she can't get it in the door. Like she felt embarrassed at how loud the key rattling was and he decided to help her out. He put his hand firmly on hers and guided her hand into the keyhole and she said it felt like they were breaking the door's virginity. <laughs> then he guided her in to the door, the key, and said, be patient, we're not in a rush. They get inside of the apartment. It's dark as hell and she's clinging on to him so she doesn't lose him. They heard voices and it, what she assumed it was the TV. And at this point, they're walking down the dark hallway past the kitchen and they start humming the Jaws theme while they're clinging to each other like dun 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 I'm half shark and half beta, don't come near me, I will eat you. They make their way past the kitchen, go into the living room and they see Bestie A with the bodyguard and she is once again getting her back blown out. <laughs> She was in the love seat with the bodyguard. And this is what Lay said, because I just got to use her words. She said, Isis, I mean, knees in the seat, holding the head part, bodyguard's left leg on the side, his left thigh on the sofa, and the other on the floor. Bodyguard was gripping her hips so tight, the bruising is still clearing. One hand over her mouth and all. Bitch, I flipped them lights on so fast. Yugi ran to close the curtains since they were their only light source. He screamed like a screen queen girl, LMAO, if you know the show. Girl. <laughs> screen queens. So they're all in shock at this moment and Yugi gave like a little thumbs up while trying to he was fighting for his life, trying to suppress his laughter. So while he was still inside, he's like, baby, you didn't tell me they were coming back home. And then she said, I sent her dumbass a text. 
And Laysta, they're like, girl, how you gonna blame this on me? You said y'all were hanging out. So then she made a joke about something else that was hanging and they all had a good laugh before Bodyguard and Bessie A scurry back off to the bedroom and close the door. But before she closed the door, she said, don't come in here and don't worry about Bessie B. She's at a hotel with the doe-eyed hottie and the guy who was talking to her in the booth. And then she slammed the door. So now that they're away, Yoongi and Lay kind of just sit there staring at each other. And then they just burst into laughter. <laughs> so they sat there, had more of their 7-Eleven snacks. And they were watching TV, but she doesn't remember what was on TV because like he had his arm around her shoulder. She had her legs on his legs and she's getting like turned on a little bit. And then she said she didn't even realize it, but she was staring at him yawn. So then he said, you're staring. And she was like, no, I'm not. They're not. He said, well, it is getting late. And she's like, yeah, it is. But feeling kind of thirsty, she just went forward and kissed him again. And they had another one of those passionate, intimate kisses that they had in the club. So then she climbed onto his lap, kind of like to straddle him. And then he grabbed the booty meat and she felt his nature rise. Y'all know what I'm saying. Also, she said for reference, she's only like 5'1". So he seemed really tall to her and he picked her up and they were kissing still and making their way down the hallway. And he's asking her like, which room is it in between kisses? And then she says she's always heard a lot about how Koreans skip out on like the foreplay, but she didn't need it because at this point she was like a geyser. But the crazy thing is nothing actually happened that night. And she says she was very grateful to him. And here's why they're making out, getting into it. And he realized, uh, I didn't grab any condoms. <laughs> he said, usually I'd make a quick stop, but things played out differently. I feel like low-key they weren't expecting it to go there on this night because they had such a deep conversation they weren't even really thinking about sex but you know when you walk in on two people doing it it just might make you think about doing it too so then he said hey hey hey, hey sorry same situation here i'm sure you feel it but i just thought i shouldn't assume you let me in raw or assume you're on the pill and she said yes protection is always better then lay said no this is just to us not to him guys i'm on birth control but i didn't know who he'd slept with so of course no insertion tonight thank god he ain't say less raw dog because he would have been out of there so fast fuck no <laughs> see i was throbbing in my heart lol because i didn't think he'd be so generous to my needs with that he played with her and tugged himself for around 20 to 25 minutes, touching and kissing, and they both left Earth. A blissful silence fell upon us as we cleaned up and went to shower together. And he's I just gotta quote her, like this is where it gets good. After I shower, he got into my bed and I had to lend him some of my baggy black Nike shorts I'd wear on my period to hide my grandma undies. So I used that moment to peek my head out of the door to see if the TV was still moaning. Lo and behold, under Bessie A's door, the red light was still on and one could only assume. With that, I went back to closing the door behind me. This Greek god sculpted man peeled the covers back from me, tapped my side and said, come babe, or jagia. And we both went to sleep. Seven hours later, around 10 a.m., we woke up. So this next day, they actually went on an official date, just them two. They went back to his place and he cooked her dinner. He set up the table all romantically. She says she's pretty sure they're exclusive now because they had this talk about only seeing each other, though no one's used like boyfriend or girlfriend words yet no labels but she's still thinking about a lot like is it a good idea to date someone who lives in another country because she does eventually have to go back home but like for now she's very happy with him emotionally physically socially sexually romantically things are great with Lei and Yugi like before said, we get into this story because like I said it is a story it's a lot there's oh my god it's a lot I want to give you all a disclaimer this story is gonna sound pretty crazy she insists it's real so I'm gonna believe her it is that crazy like it's caused some serious doubts in me I've been debating over the past few days should I share this like just to be clear for now we cover like actual people's stories in the future I was talking with some people in discord in the future we might go through like a a cool fanfic version of these story times but for now I want to focus on what really happens to foreigners when they go to Korea. I feel like it could help give you an idea of what could happen to you if you go or when you go based on what has happened to people when they went or while they're there now. There's good and bad stuff that happens to everyone anywhere regardless. That's no different to being a foreigner in Korea. Don't expect the dreamy K-drama stuff you see on TV and in the movies. It's possible but don't expect it. I'm a perv. Disgusting shit. Okay, now let's jump into the story. So this is part three to what happens when you leave the club with a sexy opa. I highly recommend you guys check out part one and part two before you watch this because if we're jumping right into this and you'll be lost. First she said, I says I have some tea. Saw Yoongi's mean side and saw his affectionate side. Met the family, got into an argument. I got way too drunk and I met an inspiring woman. Grab something because this is long. Sorry I haven't updated you in a while. And she actually also included a picture of her and him, the happy couple. So if you 
want to see what they look like or a little outline of what they look like then you'll have to watch the whole video because I'm gonna add the picture somewhere towards the end of the video so where we left off at the end of part two what happens when you leave the club with a sexy opa she went to his place and he cooked for her and this starts from what happens the next day when they woke up so first thing laid made them an American breakfast she made an American breakfast for Yungi, her friend bestie a and her partner the bodyguard they all had like a group conversation they were asking the bodyguard about like his type his dating history what got him in the bouncer business his body count most recent relationship other things like that like this is the kind of environment conversationally they were having so sometime later while lei was hanging out with yungi they were about to watch movies they were trying to figure out what to watch and you know when you're laying there and you're like shit i don't know what to watch honestly there's nothing good on netflix these days anyway yeah i said it come at me netflix so this is where their first major argument starts and she even said in the email that she kind of feels like maybe i overreacted i am a cancer i'm a really emotional person so that's her disclaimer so yeah like i said they're chilling at the house trying to figure out what they're gonna watch together and yungi knows that if he doesn't pick, she's gonna put on a YouTube video. <laughs> she said you should put on some like true crime stuff or watch Rotten Mango. So she went into YouTube and she started to type in CC less than three. That's me. <laughs> so they started to watch the video I did with Jion and Bria about dating in Korea as a foreigner versus dating in Korea as a Korean. Like do Korean guys treat foreign girls and Korean girls differently? And then Yungi's like, hmm, I wonder if these girls would ever come back to Korea or if like this experience makes them not want to come back. Lay's like, of course they would. Like Bria is still in Korea right now. And I went back the following year after that video. Last year was the first year in a while that I didn't go back. Just personally, dating in Korea is a no-go for me, dog. It's a no. It's definitely a no for me, dog. So then Lay tells Yungi that these types of videos inspired her to make her trip and her vacation to Korea. It's worth noting that this is a vacation for Lay and her friends. Like they've delayed their flight going back a few times, but it's meant to be a short term thing. But they do know they have to leave eventually. And I guess Yungi wasn't quite aware of that. Nani? So he goes, wait, vacation? Cause you know, vacation means temporary. And she said he sounded angry and kind of hurt when he said that, when he reacted to that news. Like they were cuddled up and he pulled his arm away from her. And she said that kind of hurt her like emotionally. So she told him about the recent notification she got about like the potential cheapest options for a flight back to the States. And how at this point she hadn't really thought that much about going back because she's been in this perfect, happy little bubble getting to know Yoongi, his friends, her friends turning up in Korea. So Yoongi's really upset. Like, is this a fucking joke? And that triggers Lay because she's like, don't cuss at me. I, who the fuck you think you talking to? Who the fuck do you think you are? No, well. And then he says, what the fuck? So you were gonna fuck me and disappear? He's a phantom. And at this point she's mad because he's yelling at her. She says she can't stand when a man cusses at her and it's not made any better by the fact that he's yelling at her. And she's yelling about how she told him all this already before. Like he knew that she was gonna have to go back eventually, but maybe he wasn't listening or paying attention. And she's also upset by the fact that they've been like seeing each other and spending time together for the past few months and he's not once called her or claimed her as his girlfriend. And this is where she dropped in a little important fact that she had a threesome wow. with Yoongi and Hobi. So apparently when they finished doing what they were doing, Hobie got his clothes on, he was about to get up and get dressed. But he kissed Lei on her forehead before he did that. Lei stayed in bed and Yugi was upset by like that bit of intimacy. And he put his feet, like he sat on the side of the bed, put his feet on the floor. And he took a turn to Hobie and said, this is a one-time thing, like this is never happening again. But then Hobie looked back at Lei, he smirked and he said like, okay, I got it, I understand. So Lei was upset that he was all possessive in that moment, but still hadn't claimed her as his girlfriend. And they're arguing, he's like, that's not the same thing, that's totally different. So they're going back and forth having this argument. It's really going nowhere productive. And it got to the point where Lei heard Yoongi say under his breath something along the lines of, what a disappointment, she's a disappointment. That's what she heard. But we're gonna get more clarification on what he said later in the story. So when she heard this, she was fighting back her tears. She was really hurt by that. So she decided to go to his room, get dressed, pack up her stuff and leave. She just left his place. Like she was hurt, he didn't try to communicate with her, clear up the situation. So right now it's about 7.30 PM when she leaves his place. She's wandering, doesn't really know what to do. And then around eight o'clock, she stumbled upon a club. So Lay decided to queue up for the club, go in the club, drink, and forget her troubles. But before doing this, she decided to put her phone on silent, like a do not disturb. She didn't want any calls from nobody, no texts from nobody, especially Yoongi. 
She was definitely one of those leave me the fuck alone moods. It happens. So when Lei got into the club, she sat in a booth by herself. While sitting there alone, she went on YouTube and she started watching videos by a channel called Beta Squad. Those videos cheered her up, made her laugh, put her in a better mood. And as you can imagine, she's in a loud club, right? So like to drown out the sound of the club music and to amplify the sound of her headphones, she's probably blowing out her eardrums. So while she's watching these Beta Squad videos, she's also drinking a lot. Keep in mind, she's only about 5'1 and 120 pounds, so... <laughs> And suddenly, a drunk woman about her age comes over to her and they started to have a conversation. Lay made it a point to say how this woman looked so tired and so stressed and the fact that she showed up to the club wearing a tracksuit says a lot. So apparently this girl became a mom when she was a teenager her parents neglected her and she was in a relationship with an abusive husband. So hearing this girl's story and seeing what she was going through made Lay feel like it ain't that bad. I, I shouldn't be as upset right now as I am. And she said she should stop thinking so selfishly. And then she thought about like, maybe it's not always Korean guys screwing over foreigners. Like this shit happens to Korean women here too. There's no reason to blame like groups of people or be upset at groups of people. People in general just suck sometimes. So as Lay's talking with this girl, she's like, why do you stay in this situation? Why do you stay in this relationship? And she says she relies on her husband financially. Like she can't leave him because she can't take care of her child without him. And she also doesn't want to break up the family. She doesn't want the son to not have his dad. And Lay was told by this girl to like be stronger and stay strong. And it was a pep talk that she definitely needed. So Lay left her booth and she was she was feeling better, you know, albeit drunk, but feeling better. And this is about 10 p.m. now, when suddenly she is grabbed by two people. One of them was Bestie A. The other was Bestie A's boy toy, the bodyguard. Bestie was pissed and yelling at Lay, teary-eyed and all. That's the last thing Lay remembers because Lay blacked out. She woke up the next day in a big t-shirt in a room that she did not recognize. She also heard talking on the other side of the door, so she said... <laughs> She decided to take her belt and use it as a weapon for whoever was on the other side of the door because she didn't know where she was. So she closed her eyes and started swinging and before she knew it, she was swinging and hitting the bodyguard with her belt. She only stopped when she realized it was Bessie A. She's like, girl, calm down, it's us. And in that moment of realization, she went to the bathroom and she threw up because homegirl is hungover. After that, she took a shower and she got on some fresh clothes and this is when Bessie A said, sit down, I need to talk to you, I'm upset with you, we need to catch up, you need to explain. So Bessie A says she was really upset and worried about Lei because last she heard, Yoongi was calling people frantically like, do y'all know where Lei is? We had an argument, she stormed out, she left, I don't know where she is. She's ignoring my calls and my texts. So Lei's like, well, I didn't get any calls or texts, but she forgot, oh yeah, I made sure I wouldn't receive those. So she explained that she felt like a disappointment because of what Yoongi said to her. And then she paused and was like, wait, how the fuck did you find me anyway? Like she strolled into some random club and they suddenly escorted her out to their place. So apparently Lei had her Snapchat location on and Bessie A was able to follow it and find her in the club. She said they got to the club, they found the location where she was and they started to call her frantically and text her and she was ignoring all communication efforts. And Lei was like, yeah, I was in the bathroom talking with this girl. She gave me this pep talk, we had a good talk. I was with her for most of the night. So the Bessie A is like, well, how was this argument so bad that you felt like you had to just leave and not tell anybody where you were going? Like we are alone abroad, women in another country. You need to let us know where you are at all times. Of course, Lei realized, yeah, my bad. I shouldn't have did that. But she also didn't want to have to relive that argument again. But because she wanted to make sure her friend understood where she was coming from, she did just that. And she got a bit upset again. But Lei was surprised to learn that Yoongi was looking for her. So with everyone all caught up, Lei decided to go on her phone and see all these missed calls and texts. Yoongi called 54 times and left 113 text messages. Mm, what you say? Mm, that you only meant well. He left messages like, pick up the phone, I'm sorry. Let's talk, at least tell me you're okay. It's not what it seems, etc., etc. Lay needed a break from all this, so she decided to spend the next two days at Bodyguard and Bestie A's place. But she doesn't have her charger or anything. So the first day her phone was blowing up, but the second day her phone died because she couldn't charge it. At this point though, she knew she was being kind of like third wheel, cock blocking Bestie A and Bodyguard's fun activities because they were trying to tone down their romance around her. I mean, that makes sense, right? Like if one of your friends is going through a traumatic relationship situation or issue, and you're happy with your partner. You wanna be all in their face like, love you, buggy. Can you go pass me some sugar? Oh, you are my sugar, my little cute. Cute. No, I get it. So they wanted to tone it down like, you wanna join us for a movie? We're, we're ordering pizza. Rusty Cray, yeah, 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 pizza. 
like they were trying to include her without being all overt. So that made Lei feel bad and she left on the third day. She got dropped off by the bodyguard <laughs> around Han River. She enjoyed the weather, she noted that the view was really nice, it was such a peaceful afternoon. She was killing time, not really sure what to do, and also a bit heartbroken. So suddenly she felt a hand on her shoulder and heard a voice say, are you still running from me? She was really caught off guard because she thought naturally that was like the end of them because they had this big fight. She didn't want to hear what he had to say. She didn't want to be a disappointment to him. So then she turns to him and she's like, wait, how did you find me? Like, how's everybody finding me? And apparently Bodyguard went in Bessie A's phone and used Snapchat to find exactly where she was and then he told Yoongi where she was. So he tells her he wants to try again and that he's sorry. So after they talked it out for a bit calmly, she decided to go back with him to his place. Only if they agree to take things slow. Baby, come through. You deserve a round, round, round. You deserve a round, round, round. with him riding back to his place walking on eggshells a little bit so when they get back to his place they sit on the couch the very same couch where they just had their argument a few days ago so this time he held her hands and he said he never said that she was a disappointment he was saying that he is a disappointment this didn't mean much to her at the time but what he tells her later makes it make more sense to her because later in the weekend, she accidentally meets his mother. And there's so much more to him and his story that makes sense to her later. So he told her about his upbringing and that led to him getting teary eyed and he actually started to cry a bit. He said his mom took away his friends and his two younger siblings were his responsibility. He had a really strict traditional Korean mom. So with all this, Lei feels better. She feels bad for you know what he's been through, but she feels like they're in a good place. So they're chilling again, everything's good. And then suddenly Yoongi gets a call from his brother that says that, they all want to go meet at dad's and they're coming up in the weekend. He has a little brother and a little sister. So now we'll skip up to the weekend. Lei wore a long nude maxi dress and she was under the impression she would not be meeting his mother because what she heard from Yugi, his mother sounds awful. She's away on a business trip. So they had to drive pretty far to get to his dad's place or his parents' place, but they're only going to see his dad. And when they get there, the dad is super welcoming, super bubbly and super nice. She said he had golden retriever energy. <laughs> he did seem surprised to see Lei, but like not in a bad way. He's being very extra to the point where Yoongi's like, Dad, chill. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? She also said he spoke English like it was his first language. And apparently his family was pretty well off based on the size of his parents' home and the nice place that Yoongi lived in. So now that she's met his dad, in walks his little sister and his little brother. His brother came in with his wife of six years and his wife is half Mexican and half Korean, and they have an eight month old child. Then the sister walks in with a half Japanese, half black boyfriend of four months. So when they arrived, Lei was bombarded with questions because apparently Yoongi has like never brought home a girl. They're like, where'd you guys meet? When'd you guys meet? How long have you known each other? How old are you? Where do you come from? Do you live here? What do you do? They're also saying how they don't visit home often because of their mother <laughs> and because the mom's away. They're like, yeah, we figured this would be a good time to come see dad. The siblings are explaining how the mom isn't the most welcoming and accepting person and the fact that she even calls her grandchild a hafu. Y'all know, know what a hafu is, right? So everyone's chatting, everyone's getting along really well, but suddenly they hear someone else arrive and it's his mom. The mom was mad condescending and it even got to the point where she asked Lei what kind of brown she was. <laughs> what the <laughs> Breathe in. Boy. That upset Yoongi. I'm curious, how would you guys handle this? Like, like I've always, I always like to know how, how people think, what they would do if they were in this situation. What would you guys do if this was you? Like, let me know in the comments. She kept questioning Lei with the same questions she just answered, but wording them in a much more rude, condescending, derogatory way. Like, the tension's there, as you can imagine. They just went from this bubbly, friendly, welcoming, let's get to know each other environment to now this <laughs> shit mom's home. So his sister's boyfriend is like, oh, it's nice to meet you again to his mom. And she says, hmm, likewise, but you can tell she didn't really mean it. Yoongi had enough of being in her presence. He said, I'm gonna go outside and get some air. The mom left to go to the kitchen to make some tea. And before, Lei knows that she's in the room alone with Yoongi's dad. And just as Lei is sitting there thinking to herself, like, his dad is so nice and so kind. Why is he with this bitch? This bitch! And just as she's thinking that, the dad decides to explain and give a little bit of backstory. He says, she wasn't always like this. She wasn't this way when I first met her. So basically, long story short, apparently, Yoongi's mom was also a teen mother. Her family did not want her to keep the baby. And they also kicked her out because she was pregnant too young. So because of the mistakes she's made, she's really controlling and overprotective of her kids to try and make sure they don't make the same mistakes she did. She thinks she knows best, so her decisions are final. It's a 
go to school, study really hard, get a really good job, stay Korean, proud true Korean blood. I'd like to add emphasis to that second part because she was so strict with like true Korean blood, in fact, that Yoongi wasn't even allowed to have foreign friends. Apparently he had a white friend and a Filipino friend and Yoongi's mom confronted them and their parents. Whatever was said with that led to the end of his friendship with those foreigners. So this is why he stopped bringing friends around, why he stopped bringing girls around because his mom chases people away. But the dad insists that little by little, the mom is changing, she's opening up because the fact that she even pretends to like her child's partners, that that's progress. So now that Lei has the family tea, a lot of this makes sense to her. The way Yoongi is cold and a loner, the way his mom is such a bitch, and this overall tense family dynamic. So then Yoongi and his brother come back inside and they said that they're gonna leave, they're going home. I hate it here! I wanna go home! <sighs> they said bye to their dad, they actually gave him a tight, heartfelt hug because dad's cool, they don't mind dad, they love their dad. Of course they love their mom too on some deeper level, but they don't like to be around her. So as Lei is also, you know, it was nice to meet you, bye, and get ready to go, she went to Yoongi and told him that I'll always be here for you. So they held hands and walked back to the car and drove away. And she said the whole car ride home, he was like clenching her hand and kissing it occasionally and they felt like they were in a really good place. So she asked if he was okay, he said he's good. He asked if she was okay, she said I'm good. He also said, don't worry, I'm never gonna do that to you again. Like I won't let you, you won't have to deal with that tension and weirdness again. So when they got back to his place, they finally acknowledged the fact that Lei and her friend, they do gotta leave Korea eventually, like they gotta go back to the States. <laughs> So she said they're probably going to be going back somewhere between March 14th and March 20th. But here's the kicker. Apparently, Yoongi is planning to go to the States with her. He said he'd been there before, he always wanted to go back, and now he has more of a reason to go back. So later that night, they decided to cook together, and they had another fun evening with each other. It was fun like the first time that they met and hung out at his place. And then finally, after three and a half months of dating, he finally asked her to be his girlfriend. He said the way that she handled dealing with his mom, how she was always calm, she didn't like run away and be like, I'm done, I don't want anything to do with this. And even though the mom was being cold and and giving off such you're not welcome here energy, she stayed and held her ground and she stayed until Yoongi said he was ready to go. So that left like a lasting impression with him. I appreciate you. You loyal. I changed a lot. So yeah. As of uploading this, it's March 13th, so sometime over the next week, she's going back to the States and he may be going with her. And that is where part four ends. <laughs> she ended the email by saying, that's it, Isis. I hope my grammar and spelling is good to interpret. I don't know what's gonna happen for our 100 days together, which is why I'm nervous because just yesterday, Bestie A said she saw some of Bodyguard and Yugi's convos and there were promise ring screenshots in there. She said before she could read, Bodyguard came back into the room. So either one or both of us could be getting a promise ring. The days have been tripled for me, the time together and all. It finally feels like we are one, it's been a journey. Hold up, wait a minute, y'all thought I was finished. Sorry, I'm not a rapper, but I am an editor. And while I was editing this video, after I recorded it, I got another email from Lay with a screenshot about the promise rings that I was just talking to y'all about. And this is what they translate to. Apparently this is from Bodyguard talking with Yoongi. And it says, sorry, I only saw it now. I was busy. Really, bro, don't certain colors have specific meanings? Love has many meanings. I'm sincere, bro. That's why it's happening now. Pink? I'm asking her to be my real girlfriend. I'm actually ready to do it. I'm at that age now. Ha ha ha. And then cook, cook, cook. And she also sent me pictures of these rings. So cute. Yeah, that was a lot, right? <laughs> I would love to know what you guys think about this story in the comments. Like, what would you do if you was in her situation? Would you be able to be that cool and calm when this woman asks you stuff like, what kind of brown are you? Like, no! no! Please binge the playlist that I brought to pop up on the end screen if you want to see more of these story times and some of my vlogs. Thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Annyeong!